Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School, joined by uh, Omafra Corn Lead, uh, Ben Ross. Or ben, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you, Bernard? I'm good. I'm good. We are at uh, FarmSmart at the Allura Research Station. I want to talk about strip till. And uh, a lot of questions here today, and uh, basically on your presentation, on your trial, on how to soil test for strip till. And I, I guess it's an obvious question. If you're putting all, you know, a lot of your nutrients in a strip, you know, how do you test across that field? So I guess the, the first question is, you know, what's the difference in nutrient concentration in that strip versus the rest of the field? Right, so as you mentioned, you know, obviously you're, one of the big benefits of strip till is being able to put fertilizer in that strip when we're going, which is great, but obviously from a fertilizer soil testing perspective, uh, presents a bit of a challenge. So again, depends a bit on the system. Some strip tillers are moving their strip consistently, you know, say 10 inches every year in that corn year uh, to, you know, spread fertilizer or applications across the field. But other guys like the approach of just always keeping the strip in the exact same spot, keeps tire traffic off the corn rows, they like that benefit. But then of course you're constantly just building that strip uh, every time you're doing a strip till pass in that rotation. So, you know, just as an example for a grower who's keeping it in the exact same spot, uh, Jake Monroe had done some soil sampling um, last summer. And in his case, when he looked at values inside of the strip where P and K had been built, you know, he had a soil test P value of 58 in the strip and a soil test K value of 106 in the strip. When he compared soil sampling outside the strip where they was never stripped and never uh, banded with fertilizer from the strip tiller, it was a 21 for P and an 83 for K. So clearly building things over time in those strips. So Ben, clearly we've got a higher concentration of, of uh, fertilizer in that strip. So when you're soil testing, you want to get an average look at that field, how do you collect your samples? Right, and obviously that's a challenge, right? Because our test has been calibrated for a field that's been broadcast. Corn roots aren't just confined in that zone. They're using the, you know, the whole soil profile and out in the rows as well to pick up nutrients. But obviously you want to capture what would it look like had there been fertilizer broadcast across the whole field to actually use the recommendations, right? In the pub bait 11 or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. So there was some work done actually in Illinois where they compared that. They compared strip till where fertilizer was banded in the strip and they compared that to no till where fertilizer been broadcast across the field. And their, basically their goal was how can you soil test in a strip till scenario to get the same PPM value in a soil test as where you would soil test across a no till field where things have been broadcast. So they looked at a bunch of different scenarios. What they found is that if you take one soil test inside of that zone where fertility had been built, for every two or three samples taken outside, outside of the strip, so you know, in between your corn rows, on average, once you mix all those soil samples up, you would get a value that was pretty similar to where the same amount of fertilizer had been broadcast in the no-till plot right beside it. So that's, you know, the general recommendation is one core in that built-up strip for every two or three cores taken outside of that strip to get that field average. What about a grower who wants to come back in on the same strip? Um, you know, obviously they, they're more concerned about the fertility in the strip rather than the overall field. Right, so you know, in a low testing field, sometimes the corn row syndrome we call it shows up in wheat where you can see the old fertilizer band. So growers who are, uh, are coming back on the exact same strips every time they do strip, um, some approaches they're taking is making sure in general their field uh, field soil tests are in good shape to start with, I think that's key. And um, also if you're putting down wheat and beans, uh, I think a lot of the growers who are in that system are putting some fertility down with them as well um, to make up for that too. So I think, you know, obviously there's a system that has to work. Those are some of the things they're making, uh, some of the things they're doing to make that system work to come back and always build those same strips year after year. Hey, great insights, Ben. Uh, thanks for taking the time. No problem. Thank you, Bernard.